Hi, I'm uh, Larry Osterling. Many of you may know that I'm the past director of the Slingery Chamber, I'm now retired. But when I saw Pineapple House was closing and Joy was retiring, or at least semi retiring, Joy Ely, I felt it was really important for people to know just exactly how important Pineapple House and she and Ron have been to the downtown. I moved here in 1977. I remember what down, our downtown in Sling was like. It was pretty sparse. And things just didn't really get rolling until Joy and her touch, she brought people downtown. She's been a fixture ever since. And for anybody who knows anything about being a small town re retailer, it's not easy, you need talent. The fact she succeeded at it, not only has made us all proud, but the entire city is losing a, a building block that. I felt it needed to be recognized, and I, it's important. The building we're in, which many people are familiar with, is at the corner of uh, the main street of Saline. And that would make it the northeast corner. The building itself, um, certain parts of it date back pre-Civil War. And the foundations, I couldn't help but think on the way over here, the foundations date back to that and those people whoever made this foundation knew what they were doing it was an important part but it's important to mention ron has been what do we call him the force behind he her. says he's mr pineapple yeah. house <laughs> he's mr Pi the kind of work he's done here and the maintenance he's done is just truly remarkable he's a talented guy you're a talented couple oh, so that's you. my spiel i think it's important for people to remember it to note it um and that's why we're doing this wow. so how does that make you feel it <laughs> makes me feel pretty humble, actually. Um, I have nothing but wonderful things to say about Celine and being here um, for 37 years this September um, as Pineapple House and um, contributing to the town in any way that I can. And I mean, this has been a dream come true for me to own my own business and to enjoy it and enjoy the town. And I, I am. I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss it a lot. But there comes a time when you have to retire. And uh, I so know. That's, that's what's happening. It has nothing to do sometimes with COVID. Sometimes when you retire, they say, can you come back for a while? <laughs> yeah, sometimes they do. I know. But being retail is hard. I it have, is. I had no idea how hard retail was. I often say it's uh, the only thing harder is it being a dairy farmer. Because at least I got Christmas Day off and Thanksgiving Day off. But... Um, but retail is hard, and I, I um, certainly appreciate every small business I ever come across after having done this for so many years myself. But One of the things I've noticed about being a successful retailer in a small town is what you've discovered is to have multiple things going. Um, not just one line, but I know you do design work, you, can make, yeah. you network with builders, with designers, all kinds of people. And even more impressive is the kind of outreach you've done. I, I, I think people... Probably a lot of people don't realize you're actually part of what was a founding of making the chamber what it was. I mean, building building the chamber when you first appeared. And you've been involved in a lot of merchant groups and a lot of things. And it seems like no matter what's going on in the community, you were there. And I could always sometimes when I was director of the chamber and I was feeling like things were closed, the walls were closing in. I'd come down and Joy always knew how to make the walls go down. Well, I don't think any one of us stands alone, and it's better when we have friends. And friends don't have to be just your close friends from from your neighborhood. They can be your your greater neighborhood, your your chamber, your other organizations. I think that's what makes it all go around. You you don't want to hermit into your business. You want to branch out. And you have been a lifesaver for me many times, Lario, many times. And Larry, we can talk. Yeah, we can talk. We, <laughs> Larry and I go way back, even before <laughs> Pineapple House. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So I think we're doing this sort of as a news thing to get some of the important yeah. things out. And Tran, of course, being here as our resident uh, resident Walter Cronkite, I, I, I guess we should open ask Tran if he has questions concerning sure. what we've talked about. Sure. Okay. Um, tell us how. Tell us how you made the decision that it was time to 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 close. To retire. Oh, well, retail is harder, mm -hmm. and as we get older, I think it's, it's harder to keep up with technology, mm -hmm. and um, so, like I said, it had nothing to do with um, COVID, 
but um, retail is just, a, it's, um, I think I've reinvented Pineapple House over the 37 years, probably three times, mm -hmm. going from design to retail to combinations and antiques, blah, blah. But um, I think the next step for me required a lot more online and technological presence. And at my age, I just, that seemed a little daunting. Mm. And um, plus the fact that, you know, you, you reach an age where there's other things you want to do. You want to travel. My husband's been retired for 15 years waiting for me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we, we, um, we hope to look at, you know, the next chapter before we're too feeble to get around. And so at some point, you because I, I could do this until I die. I mean, I really love retail and Pineapple House, but there has to be a time when you just say, that's enough. I think there's so. a key key there with people who experience us, us boomers. <laughs> um, for those of you that are into, you know, the latest, greatest, cutting edge of whatever things, I mean, the real lessons are what you learn by people who have succeeded in the past. And one of the key statements I hear is saying, don't be afraid to reinvent. How fun, so, how fun. Where did the, so, the idea that the the concept of pineapple house come from when when did it when did that idea spark in your head um well i've told the story many times mm -hmm. but my second daughter was born uh severely mentally handicapped and so i knew she would be um not going out on her own and she'd be living with us and so i couldn't necessarily keep a career um in a lot of fields that would require me to be um gone. I needed the flexibility. So um, it was actually at Mayo Clinic. When we took her to Mayo Clinic, the doctor there told me, for balance in my life, find something I'm passionate about and do that. Don't just get a job. I was working for Ford Motor Company. And he said, make sure you do something to bring balance to your life because of your handicapped child. And um, the same year, my mother lost, um, my stepfather passed away. And she was looked, so we were both sort of looking for this new thing to do in life, and we're two peas in a pod. So um, she says, well, you know, I've always wanted to do antiques as a business. And I said, well, I've always kind of wanted to do interior design. And so I went back to school and we started this business. She called it Pineapple House. She's the one that named it. So in 1983, we started this little business just four blocks north of here. And um, it has grown and developed from that. So out of, I was telling Jackie earlier, out of sort of these two tragedies came this idea of um, uh, turning our sorrows into something positive. And um, then when this building came, was available, my husband said, why don't we buy it? And I, wow, really? And um, I have loved being downtown. Um, Celine, I mean, we're right in the heart of everything. You can't. I suppose that it's you wonderful. and Ron had definite ideas about what will come into the building. I think that's a concern for people. What, what new, um, what well, new we do come? own the building, so we we will, when the time comes, we're not quite ready, but we've had lots of inquiries, have taken lots of names and numbers. Um, whether we rent it, um, there's a possibility we may offer it for sale. Um, we haven't decided yet, but yeah, I, I have a very strong sense of community and I, I would love to see something go in here that would benefit the community. Of course, of course I would. So, um, but we, we don't know yet. We don't know yet. Well, Tran, you would be, it's up to you. Are we done? <laughs> <laughs> I do have a couple more questions. Where, you say four blocks north of here. Where, yes. Where, where was it? Right, just north of Bennett Street. I think, what is in there right now? Oh, um, it's the Harrison. It was, was, it was Sammy's, no, 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 it is changed. Is it the Red Barn? The, uh, the yes. Red uh, Depot? Yes, it was part of the, yeah, so from one historic building to another. Mm -hmm. um, so we were down there at the time where the drugstore is across the street. Uh, there was an antique mall. And um, so that was a little antique hub, mm -hmm. if you will, north of town, because we actually started Pineapple House in that building, and we were renting from the Zahn family. Yeah. And um, this building was for sale, and um, some investor, I don't even know who he was at this time, he was looking to buy it and rent it to us. So he contacted us as a potential renter. Then he, when he fell off 
um, his interest. He called us up and he says, I'm walking away. It's all yours if you want it. Hmm. The thing a lot of people are going to remember Pineapple <laughs> House for, especially, is Christmas. <laughs> and tell us about what that season is like for you and, oh and how gosh. much that means. How much, uh, you know, what that does. I know you put in so much work, but it had to feel pretty good. It did. I was always nervous, too, when we had the first few minutes of the open house. Is anybody going to come? Mm -hmm. I was always so nervous um, every year. But we would, um, for many, many years, we would actually shut the store down for about five days and work through the night. That's another reason I have to retire. I just can't do that anymore. <laughs> um, but we would work through day and night, day and night, and we would transform the whole store. We would literally take 50% of the merchandise out of the store, bring the Christmas in, set it up, and being interior designers, it couldn't just be replacing one item on the shelf with a Christmas item on the shelf. All the displays had to be redone and in a, in a designer way. And I was always so proud when we were done that it looked lovely. And we, we get lots of compliments every year, we did. Um, but one of my favorite was because we have another store in town who also does a fabulous job um, with Christmas and yeah. we would bring even more business because there was the two of us and um, but this one lady came in one day and said who needs Frankenmuth we have Celine yeah yeah so and I thought the, that was pretty cool in the future for, for the <laughs> numerous hundreds of local Selenians that want to maintain contact or, or pass on compliments or anything to communicate with you. I'm assuming you're on Facebook. Yeah, I'm actually keeping the name Pineapple House. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to retire it. I didn't sell it or retire it. Um, it'll, I'll still have a Facebook presence and a website. It just will change. It won't be so store so focused. passing on thoughts yeah, will come people, right your website. Yep. Yeah, people can still Google Pineapple House and Celine and they should be and able well to Well earned retirement. Just stay there at your computer and watch all of these compliments <laughs> of everybody who loves you so much coming. Aw, you're so sweet, Larry. I got to remember getting it myself, but then you <laughs>